All right, guys, how's it going? So, last night I recorded, uh, sorry, my, my rescue dog. I could just say dog, couldn't I? But there might be girls watching, I want them to think I'm cute. Um, so last night I recorded a video titled something, Born Again Joyce, Propaganda, Surfaces with Propaganda, maybe. I was very tired uh, in that video and the videos I uploaded last night. Uh, we did a stream on here last night, but it wasn't late. Well, I was just so tired, guys, and I think it should, big time. Um, and I, I think I said in that video, I haven't got my head around it yet. Right, oh, basically, so Paul Joyce at the time, we call him born again Paul Joyce because he is born again since Michael Edwards has returned to the club. And by that, what I mean is, like, it's just non-stop revealing things, if you know what I mean. Um... And it coincides with the return of Michael Edwards. Some people might think it's Michael Edwards, you see, or even Richard Hughes, you know, who will have been introduced maybe to people. You know. But there's definitely been a, a change in, uh, in output from Joyce. Uh, and I predicted a few days ago, um, Mystic Dunk, <laughs> I said, uh, I think we will see something from Joyce, you know, next couple of days or something. But, it might not be an article to do with the managerial situation, which is what we're all clutching and waiting for, right? And he did, he, he came out with an article, uh, if it was yesterday or the day before now, I'm just that tired, I just can't remember. He did come out with an article and uh, it wasn't to do with the manager at all, it was to do with it being a year, almost a year to the day that, um, you know, we, that we missed out on Bellingham kind of thing, which, um, I don't know if I can locate the article. Just one moment, guys. I don't think so. All them tabs on here. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I'm struggling. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, here we go. So the article. Um, if you see an article in the Times or the Athletic, you can copy the link and go to a website called archive.ph. Paste the link in. It's the second option down the page. Uh, and it will display the article for you as a rule. It will give you a snapshot of that. If it's just gone live, you might have to wait a little bit. But if you want to Google this, how Jurgen Klopp realised his Liverpool vision without Jude Bellingham, copy the link, archive.ph, paste it in, you'll see it. Right. So my friend says... It's almost a year to the day since Jurgen Klopp offered that vision of Liverpool's future. Oh, that's to do with the uh, Klopp said we can become a team again that nobody wants to play against. We don't have to be the best football team to win the league. And then Joyce says it is almost a year to the day since Jurgen Klopp offered that vision of Liverpool's future. Rather than pursuing a generational talent in in Bellingham, uh, Liverpool believed they needed several signing signings to compete again, and that precluded spending heavily on a single player. Now the key bit in this article. Um, which I really want to read to you just in case you didn't see last night's video. You remember at the time, I was making claims saying, look, my peoples, right, not rumours, my peoples, people that I trust, are telling me that the Bellingham camp are here now, they've come for this trip, or I, I can't remember. It would have been something like, guys, I've heard this, they're going to be here in a couple of days, or... I think it might, might even have had the fucking day, to be honest with you. I think it might even have been a Tuesday or something. Something vaguely in my mind where I said to everyone, I think it's going to be Tuesday. Some, I don't know. You guys will know if you've been around these parts for a while. Uh, I think I said when it was going to be. Uh, and then immediately after then, I'm sure it was within 24 hours, um, there was a sudden change of writing by the likes of um, Joyce. Ornstein, all of them, all of them, even the Liverpool clique of journalists. Uh, we'd gone from, many of us thought we'd been, you know, hold, held money back in previous transfer windows so that we would go for Bellingham. It was all going to happen. And then all of a sudden, overnight, all the journalists turned the tune. And I said at the time, couldn't prove it, but why would the Bellingham camp Come to Liverpool, Merseyside, North West, wherever it was, uh, to tell Liverpool that, nah, we don't want to do this deal, we're going to go to Real Madrid. 
it just wouldn't happen. So my opinion at the time, and it was only that, was that Liverpool had gone to said meeting and said, look, you know, we're, we're not going to be pursuing this or something along those lines, right? Now, in this article that Joyce put out on April 5th, Friday, he said, Liverpool informed Bellingham's camp that they were no longer in the race to sign him before the midfielder finalised his plans to leave Dortmund for Real Madrid. Now, that statement there by Joyce is what I think relates to that meeting at the time, right? And I can't believe we're talking about all this shit again, right? And the video last night was, guys, why are we seeing this propaganda? What is this, what is this about? When you see an article, especially from Ornstein or Joyce, I always say to myself, why am I reading this? Who does it benefit? Is there a message trying to be put out, right? So I was confused last night. I had no idea, just too tired, didn't really think about it. And then you guys uh, started leaving some very interesting comments in the, in the uh, comments section of that video. And here's an interesting one. Um, there isn't a username with this, unfortunately. It just says user DH6YR3RC7G. The article has been published due to the rumours that Klopp is leaving due to the fallout with John Henry over the Bellingham deal. FSG are trying to jump the gun and get their version of events out in case Klopp tells the world of his real reason for leaving Liverpool. Joyce, as we all know, is Edward's pitch, so FSG are using this connection uh, for damage limitation. Okay, let me see if we can... There was a really... Um, Dunks, this is Colin Brooks. No smoke without fire. At that point, FSG pulled out of the deal to sign Bellingham and lost Jürgen's faith. FSG would damage Jürgen's reputation also with the Bellingham camp. Yeah, there was a... We, we had some... We did have, um, there's some videos on here, isn't there, from a few weeks ago, maybe three, four weeks ago, that say club source in the title. I'm sure one of them was about Bellingham. Because I know that said club source uh, made some claims about John Henry and, and, and Klopp and stuff like that, and Bellingham, so. And I'm sure I made a video about it. Castala Eddie. I think these comments from Joyce are cryptic riddles to try to protect FSG, protect FSG and to sow the seeds of any defence they may well need for any future reports revolving around last summer's dealings, namely Bellingham and Klopp's departure this summer. Uh, this is an exceptionally long um, message which I won't read out so I'll be here for a long time but I really do appreciate your effort with that uh, and I've read it all, I've read it all. Last paragraph. If FSG couldn't initially afford 88 million for Bellingham on top of 100 million that was paid earmarked for McAllister and Sir Sod Supply, Sir Sean Todd Supply, who I would presume were our long-time targets, how were we able to afford to offer a whopping 110 million for Casado? I think that was 115, wasn't it? From nowhere. Remember that, remember that, guys? We were all like, what the fuck? Remember that deal was actually accepted? Well, for 24 hours or so. When we seemingly couldn't afford, you know, basically the money for Bellingham. Uh, unless it was FSG realising they had finally managed to seriously fuck the boss off and were scrambling around trying to appease him. I'm not going to read any more comments out, but I think that's bang on. I have always believed that the Bellingham in the summer uh, was the was the final straw. I think I think that's when Klopp had had enough. And, and some of you guys have pointed out some of the, the comments uh, and quotes from Klopp regarding, you know, players, player recruitment and that, and when he made his decision to leave the club. Um, I'll always believe it was Bellingham. I, I do believe that it's, I think it's just like the, the, the final straw, the last straw. I don't know. There might be some private things as well relating to Jürgen, which I wouldn't want to speculate about or anything like that, because I don't think that's that's fair. And to even like say, maybe he's got this, or maybe he's a bit run down, or maybe, you know, it would be totally unfair to do that. And I'm not doing it. And I don't know anything. No one said anything. I've seen rumours and things, the same as all of you have, when he, when he announced his decision to leave, and people saying, oh, you know, it's this, this, he's lost loads of weight. and You know what I mean, right? So, 
But I just think maybe that the Bellingham, because he was talking at the time, if you remember, just prior, uh, or in the run-up, you know, just talking about his, this new energy he had for being the manager of Liverpool Football Club. Do you remember the quotes, guys? On more than one occasion. And then all of a sudden he's leaving. I think this is opinion, right? This is what I think, and I'm allowed this opinion. You can disagree with me. This is what discussion is about. I think that there was an issue over Bellingham, and I think there was um, an exchange of words between Klopp and uh, John Henry. Too many people have, have claimed it that are not related to each other. Uh, they might be all right now. Uh, I think it was clear that there was that there was a fallout, and I think that's why uh, this money, this 115 million, whatever it was, 110, 115 for Casado, just fucking appeared. Then we were all like, "What the fuck?" Do you remember John Henry coming over? Do you remember personally intervening? You know, getting involved. Do you remember conference calls coming over? Uh, Klopp throwing his mobile allegedly. It was just all everything just points this. This situation um, and then the, the panic many of you guys feel uh, I don't think I've really said it but I like that comment there many of you guys really do feel that the Casado bid was a like fuck we need to do something uh, for Jürgen uh, so many of you at the time didn't believe the Casado thing you were like nah they've made a bid and they know they're not, they can't get him anyway kind of thing uh, I don't think we're, we're going to be wrong with much of this guys I really don't so, we've, we've got an idea of what we think might have happened in the summer, but some of you think that, no, he always wanted to go to Real Madrid. Okay, then, so why did they all come to... Oh, nah, I'm not having that. Um, but the point is, why did Joyce publish this article out of nowhere talking about uh, Bellingham and how it was the right decision not to go for him? It is propaganda. There is a reason for it. We just don't know what the reason is yet. Um, but the more I've listened to your comments on that video last night, and there are many, you should go and have a look at the comments, guys. And the more I've thought about it myself, the more it's reminded me of the alleged or rumored conflict unhappiness surrounding Jürgen and this potential deal and I think I'm kind of inclined to go with you guys that are saying they're trying to get in first before something comes out later remember what I always say whose benefit is it when we read something Liverpool Football Club, in my opinion, the powers that be, and I'm going to go with the people that run the club, not FSG on this, uh, it's gone through Joyce. If it was through Ornstein, I'd probably think it was FSG or something, but through um, Joyce, wanted that out there, that message out, a reminder to everyone, look, we didn't have to spend on this one player, we got the, these other players and it's worked, right? And Liverpool doing well, right? They were they wanting to remind you. Why, I mean, why are we talking about Bellingham now? It should be... I don't want to talk about Bellingham. Well, what are you talking about? Because of that article. You see what I'm saying? We can only discuss what's in the news, right? So what the fuck? What, what is what, what is it about? Two things go through my head with it. One... Is it a pre-warning to us that, uh, you know, not to expect any big name deals in the summer? But I don't think anyone's really been um, speculating. You know, the, the Bellingham thing was was a, a one-off, right? It was something that we'd chased for years and we were all very disappointed that it didn't happen. And yes, we're, we, 
we appreciate the other players that we, we signed and you know I don't know where we'd have been without Endo. <laughs> he's done alright, and he told you, didn't I? I said to you in the summer I think he's gonna end up being a cult. Cult. C U L T cult hero. Um but we you know we did some 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 good business, but some people might argue that if they'd have got Bellingham as well, gone the extra mile and shown, you know, operated. Uh, what is it Simon Jordan says? Liverpool Football Club are an elite club, but don't have elite owners and don't operate in an elite way. Uh, what if, you know, if we'd have had Bellingham in there, how would you, you know what I mean? I don't really want to go over the fucking ifs, buts. You know, if my auntie had been born with balls, she'd have been my uncle, wouldn't she? But it's possible that they're just trying to um, pre-warn you that not to expect that. I don't think it's that. I feel it's more like uh, we made the right decision. And I feel like it's... I, I, I see, this is when I... I, I like, now I, I, I'm already thinking I don't want to say that. Uh, this should be a private video. But fuck it, I'll go with it. Um, I feel like it's someone's trying to remind Jurgen Klopp that it was the right thing to do and that maybe you were wrong, Jurgen. Now, I know that sounds very, you know, cloak and dagger and that, but we're only just talking amongst ourselves. I'm not saying my sources tell me, do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, could it be that, guys? Because that's what it feels like to me. I feel like it's, uh, you know, Michael Edwards is back at the club and he's, and he's maybe putting out and he's like, it was the right thing to do, you know. And I'm back now and I'm going to be doing more things like that. And it would make sense to try and get that message out that it was the right thing to do before it might come out from someone else's viewpoint, if that makes sense. Because when Jürgen leaves Liverpool Football Club, There'll be a lot of journalists, especially in his homeland, that will want that one exclusive interview, won't they? Right, so now you've left them, what are you going to do? And, and it might not happen immediately, it might be six months. It might be a year down the line, or more, when Jürgen's ready to return to football, if that happens. Because he'll want to raise his profile, will want him in the, his agent will want him in the, the news again, giving him an interview. And, and also then there will be warnings for potential employers as to, well, yeah, Liverpool, it was like this, and, you know, Jurgen Klopp's looking for this kind of setup, etc. At the end of the day, I don't know why Paul Joyce put that article out. It was a random article. Um, and yes, you know, when, some people might say, you're just trying to find some. No, I just, can, can you blame me? There's a, we're looking for a new manager and we're talking about what happened with Bellingham. It just doesn't make sense to me. So what do you think? We've had time to think about it now. You know, there are suggestions that, you know, Edwards and Klopp don't see eye to eye on things and maybe... Maybe Edwards is, you know, back within the organisation, not the club, so to speak, and has commented to a journalist, um, you know, about last summer and this summer, and well, look, you know, look at, you know, Jurgen thought we should do this, and you know, we vetoed it, and we did that, and look, in the end, we were right, weren't we? The organisation, the FSG, the owners were right, because look how Liverpool are doing. It sounds very plausible that that's the kind of conversation that's happened. Um, I th I've got a feeling that we might hear more about this one day, the Bellingham thing, that's it. So. Anyway, I'm not shit stirring, I'm, I'm addressing uh, stuff that's in the media uh, and some of your comments, uh, which I will continue to read. All right, guys, um, please do, if you have got a comment, you know, let me know what you think. Um, in my opinion, that article is someone at Liverpool Football Club, be it ownership, the people that run the club, getting it in there now, before someone else maybe, 
saying, Ooh, it was the right thing, we were right. That's what I think it is, and I'm sticking with it. If you can convince me differently, I'm down with that, absolutely. Right, uh, what time is it? Fucking hell, it's 11 o'clock, 10 past 11. I've got, to, I, I've got to get showered and dressed and out. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be out at 12. I'm meeting a mate at 12. 50 minutes, fucking hell. Right, I've got to go, guys. Uh, if you appreciate the video, please thumbs up. Please drop me a comment. If you want to buy me a coffee or a beer, hit the super thanks. Please read the video description. Join the newsletter, which is free. Uh, connect with me on social media, etc., etc., etc. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the game today. Um, and, and let's catch up real soon. All right, guys. See you in a bit.